Mike Musto. Each week I travel the country with the goal of showcasing the best and baddest muscle cars and hot rods around. Every car has a past and every owner a story. Welcome to the world of Big Muscle. Today is actually kind of a really cool day for us here on Big Muscle. Um, we're actually behind the wheel of a car that really kind of epitomizes what the 60s muscle car was all about. This is a 1967 Ford Mustang Fastback, pretty much the same car that you saw in the movie Bullet, although I think that was a 68. Except this car is a drag car. The car belongs to a gentleman named Greg Smith, and when we first saw the car, it was one of those things that kind of jumped out at us. I mean, it's not a canyon carver. It's not a, you know, something that you would say is a real kind of super high-end performance machine. You don't, you know, go out on the freeway with this thing. It was built to go down to 1320 as fast as it can. You know, if you, you look around at certain things on this car, you're going to notice stuff. And from the point of view of the car itself, it's just all functionality. There's, there's really no fluff here. For instance, you look at the Fenton wheels that are on this car, right? The Fenton slotted wheels. You've got these wonderful three and a half inch wide, 15 inch slots in the front. And you know, you've got 15 by, I think they're 10 and a halves in the back with drag slicks on them. And what does that do? Well, it's just made to make the car hook up and go. The car runs no you know, front sway bar. So when you go into a corner like this, you're kind of like, okay, well, I gotta make it a little easy because the front width of the tires that you're on is basically like this. It's like a motorcycle tire. It's really, really nice. It's an enjoyable car to drive. But when you think of the fact that this thing has a massive Curry 9-inch rear in it, you know, with 410 gears, it's really stout. I mean, it's, it's, it's made to take a lot of power. And that power is here. So, for instance, you know, we're in third gear, but if we roll on to it, I mean, just with that, right? I mean, you can feel this thing get up and go. It's a really kind of exhilarating thing to drive, but where we drove that 1929 Nostalgia Dragster a while ago, where that one was frightening to drive, this one is just kind of a normal car with that Jekyll and Hyde personality, right? So you can take it, you can go to the diner with it, you can bring your wife out in it, and it's, you know, people understand what it is when they see it pull up. They're like, all right, that car's meant to go fast in a straight line, but it's docile enough that you can do it, or you can take it out and you can just, like I said, roll into it and I mean, the thing just, it just hooks and goes. Now, as with any drag car, when you get on the power, it's great. You just kind of hold on for the ride and you go straight and everything is honky-dory. But when you let off, it's kind of like, think of an overweight person or an NFL linebacker coming at you in full speed. You want to get out of the way. But then when they stop, it's a train wreck. So there you go. That's what a drag car is. <laughs> you just compared the drag car to a fat person running. I did compare a drag car to a fat person running, right. and that's okay. I apologize out there if you people don't agree with me, but that is my comparison. Fast, fat people equal drag cars. <laughs> you know, so many guys get a car like this and they change everything immediately to personalize it and be like, no, I can make it bigger and better and better and whatever the case is. Yeah. But I mean, looks wise, the only thing you did was change the hood scoop and you added the cage, correct? Yeah, I had to put the roll bar in to be legal at the track. Okay. Um, and that's, for the looks, that's it. I put a new carpet in. It had a huge hole. It had a vertical gate shifter, and the hole was probably this big in the floor, this long. Okay. So I patched that up and put, we had an automatic, so we put that in. Okay. And, um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I, the way I look at it, I'm kind of like the caretaker. That's the way right. I look at this car. I, you know, I don't want to change it. I want to paint it. I want to put different rims on right. it. I like it the way it is. Okay. So, well, what do you have under the hood? Uh, it's a 393 Windsor, Stroker Windsor. And what's the quickest you've run this in the strip? Uh, on motor, 1140. Okay. And with the 150 shot of nitrous, 1128. 11, oh, I'm sorry, 1020. 10 I was going to say, I was Excuse like, me. wow, nitrous made that much of a difference, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's worth it. Uh, 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, I'm sorry, it was a 1028. Gee, that's yeah. fast, man. Yeah, it cooks pretty good. You know, it's interesting, like the shifter in this car is a B&M ratchet shifter. It's a three speed, it's a reverse valve body. So basically, what you're doing is, you know, you've got your first gear, pull thing and pull it back. And the car jerks in the first. I mean, you, you know the car is in gear. But then once you're on it, you just kind of 
rode through the gears. So, I mean, we're in first, I mean, but like I said, then if you roll into it, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> he also has a massive nitrous tank in the back with like 150 shot and that's what this little red buttons for but we're not pushing that because we're not going to blow anything up it's not our car and i just i don't know nitrous is not my thing to be honest with you guys so what are the things that we notice about the car itself i mean if we talk about the interior it's it's actually quite stock dashboard is stock radio the bezels the gauges they're all stock. I mean, we have a fuel pressure gauge on the hood, which we can obviously see. And then we've got the general gauges, right? We've got water temp, we've got our bulb gauge, and we've got our oil pressure gauge. You know, one of the other things we have is, you know, Greg's got this SunTac right on the dash that's really kind of a nice, nostalgic, old school piece. Um, he actually had the, the tack rebuilt with uh, VDO internal, so it's accurate and it works good. But otherwise, the interior's pretty well stock. I mean, granted, there is a really big roll cage in here, and it's an eight point cage, but that's safety reasons. You're gonna drag race a car that runs 1090s? I got news, you better have a cage in it. So what do you, I mean, obviously you've got the 67 Mustang and give it another 67, and then you also have the 55. Would you ever entertain making one of those into like a crazy full on gasser, blower sticking out of the hood, solid live axle in the front? Yeah, I mean, I've seriously thought about that. I wanted to do it, but I since that's my grandmother's car, that's the one thing I don't think I could hack off the front suspension. Right. You know, put the straight arcs. I mean, I love that. I'd have to find another fifty-five to do, to that do it too. too. Right. Yeah. I just. I, I mean, that car's been changed so much. At this point, it probably wouldn't really matter. But that's the one thing that's left that I'm holding on to. Right. Kind of, you know. Right, so, right, right. Like the original car. Well, you have a son too, don't you? Yeah. And how old is he? Yeah, he'll be seven in like a month. So, is this car going to him, or is the fifty-five going to him? Yeah, uh, yeah, either either one, or worst case scenario, uh, you know, sell a car, college fund, or you know, I'm I'm, I'm willing to do that. But okay. I'm not going to sell them all. I'll, I'll okay. To one or two of them. <laughs> when we first saw this car, one of the first things we noticed, the hood scoop, right? It's you could tell there's been something there before. I mean, there's this, this hood scoop on there now, but the old cowl, I think it was from a Boss 302, used to be on there, and the rivets on the hood. Are still reminiscent of that. Greg never bothered to fill him in because he's like, well, screw it. He's like, that's part of part of the history of the car, and it's really kind of nice that he he left them there. You know, you, you got to go back to what your definition of perfect car is, right? To us, this car is amazing. It's it's fantastic. You can actually see the history, right? On the driver's side door, for instance, there used to be a sticker there that said driver, and that sticker is long gone. But if you look under the paint at the right angle, you can actually make out the D and the R and the I of where it said that. There are also fade marks in the paint from where the old school stickers used to be, which subsequently were taken off the car and put under the hood. It was kind of a really cool cool way to pay homage to this thing. Is it a, a high gloss show car? It's not even close to that. But it was, it was never meant to be. It was meant to be a flat out dragster. Like I was saying, a lot of cars have squeaks and rattles into them, and you, this car does, and you'll hear it, right? But, I mean, what do you really want to hear? Well, you probably want to hear this. <laughs> God, there's so much fun. I'm going to tell everybody this right now, okay? I don't know what you guys who are watching do for a living, where on the planet that you live, or, or who your friends are, but I'm telling you, if you ever get the opportunity to, to jump behind the wheel of a, of a small block or a big block muscle car, and you get to row through the gears and experience it, do it. Don't say no. You get in these cars and there's no electronics and there's no, no nav and no anything or OBD ports where people could track you and be like, oh, you were speeding, we're not gonna, you know, we're gonna void your warranty. These cars are just meant to drive. They're meant to go out. They're meant to row through the gears. They're meant to speed and do burnouts and do donuts and break rules with. Like I said, you guys get the opportunity. Don't pass it up. Just say yes and do it. Please, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, 
Guys, listen, as always, I mean, thanks for watching. And uh, if you got a car that, that you're interested in seeing on Big Muscle, obviously email us at drivebigmuscle at gmail.com. And uh, if we can dig it and we can shoot it, then we will. But otherwise, stay tuned for next week. And Greg, thanks so much for letting us shoot this thing. Absolute blast. The car was outstanding. And um, that's it, guys. See you later. So, ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going up to the Sherwood Country Club because we just need a place to turn around. We're in Southern California in one of the most hoity-toity spots that you're ever going to see. I kind of want to go to the valet. You think it's a valet? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Oh, we're coming up to the window. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Let's see what he says. Hey, bud. We just want to turn around. Can we do that? Can we do a big smoky burnout, like all the way up and down? Can we do like a big smoky burnout in the country club? We're not allowed to do that? You sure? All right. It'd be really cool, though. He said no. He said no.